Okay, on number 11, it's supposed to give the domain and range. Well, if you see here, uh, your X's are your domain, your Y's are your range, and you have to put them in order from least to greatest. So put them in your brackets. Negative 2, 4, 5, and 9, 0, 3, and 8. Now, on number 12, um, you basically had to solve the or solve the inequality. I'm sorry, the polynomial. And you basically have to distribute that 1. So when you distribute it, this is what you end up getting. All right? Now, we have to combine like terms, and that's what I did. 8D, um, 8D to the third minus 1D to the third is 7D to the third. And then you have a negative, that's a negative 1D squared, and a minus 6D squared, that's a negative 7D squared, and then, of course, the plus 1. On number 13, you had to write a, an expression to represent the total points. So 10 plus N, that's this expression here. Uh, then it says, okay, you scored uh, 10 and 16, so you had 16 total points. All right, if you scored 16 points in the, in the uh, second, second part. Number 14, basically, uh, when you graph this, or when you look at this, this is your y-intercept, so that's your plus 3. And then you look at this other point down here, and you count the slope. So it's rise over run, so it was 4 over 1. That's why I have this right here. And you plug that in for your slope. So y is greater than or equal to. Now, how do you get the greater than or equal to? Well, if you notice, the shading, let me erase all this. The, the shading for this one is going above. So that means all the shading is greater than or equal to because it's a solid line. So therefore, that's why we have the equation y is greater than or equal to 4x plus 3. On number 15, basically you have first year plus second year gives you a total of 23,394. It told you that the first year you paid 12,205, so 12,205 <laughs> plus x. You subtract that amount from both sides, and you get X is equal to uh, 11189 So the second year payment was that, 11189 On number 16, now on number 16, basically you had to put it in standard form, and you put it in order from highest to lowest degree. Notice that the 5 is the highest degree, so therefore that went first. And then the 4, then the 3, 2, and then 1, and then of course the... Uh, constant. When you put it in order, the coefficient that's in front is the leading coefficient. Now remember, that's only after you've put it in order. On number 17, you can have no more than 14 songs, so something is going to be less than or equal to 14. So the number of songs plus 10, because you've already got 10 songs, you've already downloaded 10 songs, is less than or equal to 14. Subtract 10. So you can have uh, less than or equal to four songs. Now, the reason why it's not solid like this is because technically you really can't download half a song. You either have the song or you don't. So that's why uh, they're solid dots instead of a, a solid line. Number 18, range is basically your highest minus your lowest. So it told you that the what the range was, it said the range was 27 and that the lowest amount was 37. So your highest minus the range would equal 37. So if you add 27 to both sides, you get a high score of 64. And if you were to do 64 minus 37, that would equal your range of 27, which is one of the things of information that they gave you. On number 19, you had to find the rate uh, for each segment. So in this case, Notice I did uh, 14 over 2, 9 over 1, 6 over 2, 10 over 2. So what I did here was I reduced them all down. And the one that had the highest rate was the 9 over 1, and that was the fastest increase. And you have to put in like a little term here. So fastest increase was from 1230 to 130, and that was 9 swimmers per hour. On number 21, uh, it's not really the... the the path of the ball, it's really the distance versus time. As time goes by, the distance gets higher and higher and higher, or further and further and further. Then, eventually, the distance uh, 
that the ball is thrown starts to decrease and he gets closer to the ground and then finally the distance is zero and notice this is a continuous there is no there are no breaks in the path or there are there are no breaks in the graph on number 22 <laughs> on this particular problem um, you're looking at miles per hour so it's 120 miles uh, in 4.6 hours okay so basically I just divided 120 divided by 4.6 if you use this formula distance is 120 your time is 4.6 and you want to solve for R divide both sides by 4.6 and you end up getting a rate of 26.1 miles per hour and then finally on number 23 time travel distance remaining you need to tell me what the intercepts mean well when x is 0, y is 5,000. So that means that's the distance remaining when Christy started. And then, of course, 8, 0 is the time it took Christy to complete her ride.